Cruz murdered 17 people. When three more Broward deputies arrived, they too took shelter behind their cars rather than try and enter the school and save the lives of children. Scott Israel is the man in charge of all of this, and of course he's responsible for it. He loudly disagrees. Indeed, Israel relentlessly brags about himself to all media who will record it. Two years ago, for example, the local newspaper in Florida reported that Israel used tax dollars to build a personal political machine, and he clearly had. The evidence was there, stone cold. Confronted with it, Israel said this, quote, what have I done differently than Don Shula or Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King or Gandhi, end quote. And by the way, he said, lions don't care about the opinions of sheep. Stable people don't talk like this, obviously. Something is wrong with Sheriff Israel. As recently as yesterday, he was refusing to accept any responsibility in the face of his well-documented failures. Watch this exchange. Do you think that if the Broward Sheriff's Office had done things differently, this shooting might not have happened? Hey, listen, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, uh, you know, uh, O.J. Simpson would still be in the record books. I don't know what that means. There's 17 dead people and there's an, a whole long list of things your department could have done differently. Remarkably, it got weirder and worse from there. Watch. Are you really not taking any responsibility for the multiple red flags that were brought to the attention of the Broward Sheriff's Office about this shooter before the incident, whether it was people near him, close to him, calling the police Jake, Jake, on him? I could Jake, I could only take responsibility for what I knew about. I exercise my, my due diligence. I've given amazing leadership to this agency. Amazing leadership? Uh, I've worked... Yes, Jake. Amazing leadership. And yet the facts suggest that Scott Israel should not be in charge of anything. And yet he is. Why? Richard Corcoran is the Speaker of the Florida House. He signed a letter calling for Israel's suspension as Sheriff of Broward County. And he joins us tonight. Mr. Speaker, thanks for coming on. No, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, Tucker. So tell us what your letter says and why. Well, and first, it wasn't just a letter from me. It was a letter from me and 73 of my colleagues, basically uh, representatives accountable for 13 plus million people in the state of Florida. And what we sent a letter to the governor saying, under the Constitution, he has the right to remove any local government official, uh, suspend them, and, and take them out of office. And we said, basically, uh, your authority to do so is if they're malfeasance, misfeasance, incompetence, neglect of duty, of which we believe that Sheriff Israel scores high on all four accounts. Uh, so we asked him to suspend him and go down there and take over the investigation and, and find a replacement. And so uh, 74 of us signed it. Uh, the governor immediately, to his credit, uh, called on FDLE, our state law enforcement agency, to go down there and, and seize the investigation and take over. Uh, but we'd still like to see him suspended by the governor. And then ultimately, our Florida Senate has the ability to reinstate him or have him be removed completely. And I'm pretty sure, talking to my colleagues in the Senate, they'd remove him completely. So my guess would be of the 74 signatories, most or all were Republicans, which raises the question, why yes, is this a were. partisan issue? So he had four deputies with guns at the scene of a school shooting and they refused to help. That's not a partisan question. You don't need to be a Republican to be appalled by that. Why did no Democrats support his removal? Well, I think we do have the support. Uh, you know, it's very difficult, I think, for some of them because many of them are from that geographical area of Broward County, right. a significant portion of our Democratic colleagues. So I think for them, uh, it was like, you're right, go forward. Uh, we encourage you. But, uh, you know, signing the, the letter was, uh, was something that was a, a step too far for them. But, but they're, they're completely supportive, whether it's the parents I've talked to, of the victims, whether it's uh, our colleagues across the aisle. Uh, everyone's disgusted with both his attitude and the investigation and what he's been doing to, to date. So my impression is that the deputies who sat outside armed while 17 people were murdered at the school were within their legal rights. They were allowed to do that. Most of us respect law enforcement because we think they're willing to put their lives in the line for us. These people weren't. That seems to me maybe something that the legislature could address. If you're a deputy in charge of protecting the public, shouldn't you be obligated to protect the public? Yeah, and, and let me say, Tucker, and I think you would say the same thing. I, I'm an outside counsel for a sheriff's office as part of my yeah. job as an attorney. I can tell you the sheriff's a friend of mine. I know tons of law enforcement officers. Not one single law enforcement officer that I know in that situation wouldn't have gone scrambling into that hallway, up the stairways, whatever it took to try to save those children. What we have here is a poorly run agency. And whether it was the uh, the uh, officer on site or the the three that came in the car or the, the officers that went out to his house, as you 
you said, 23 times and, and never uh, did anything, even though he was a, a threat, whether it was the deal that he entered into with the superintendent of schools that basically said we're going to have a no arrest policy so he can bring guns and knives uh, and bullets to school, all of these things. And, and, and the funny thing is, is this is by his own words. What Sheriff Israel said is in each one of those situations, the officers outside, the uh, school resource officer inside, the, the people inside who denied first responders the ability to go help these kids, the, the agreement and, and those uh, bullets coming to school. He's got every single person under investigation, but he just want to hold himself accountable for all these people that he has to investigate for their wrongdoing, but he's done none. And the height Shh. of arrogance, as you said, Tucker, I mean, the only well, amazing thing about Sheriff Israel is his arrogance. I mean, something's yes. wrong, it seems yes. like. This is not normal behavior. But, but quickly, in the military, there's a sanction, a penalty for cowardice, because the point is, you're not allowed to be a coward. You're in the military. And I think the same would go, wouldn't you say, for a sheriff's deputy or any law enforcement. Most aren't cowards. But for those who are, shouldn't there be some penalty for that? There should. I mean, we should look at uh, taking away their pensions. If you don't act the way you should in a situation where there are 14 children's lives at stake and three adults, absolutely, you should have your pension taken away. Yeah, good. Thank you for that. Speaker Corcoran, I appreciate it coming on tonight. No, thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker. Well, as you just heard, EMTS are telling Fox tonight that police officers prevented them, for some reason, from entering Stoneman Douglas High School to provide care to kids who were dying. Fox's Matt Finn has new exclusive information on that story tonight. Matt? Tucker, three high-ranking Florida officials are expressing their frustration because they say EMS was delayed getting inside Stoneman Douglas High School on the day of the shooting in the critical moments when victims lay inside in need of immediate care. One source tells Fox News some EMS teams requested to go inside but were denied by the commanding agency, the Broward County Sheriff's Office. That source alleges scanner recordings will reveal that. Now, the Broward County Sheriff's Office released a statement in response to some of these allegations saying in part there are multiple investigations being conducted in addition to the Stoneman Douglas shooting. Investigators will not be rushed or asked to jump to conclusions. A reporter from our Miami affiliate WSVN reports that a seasoned first responder said they would have risked their life to go inside and that they were frustrated the entire time they were there. However, the Coral Springs Parkland fire chief who was on scene that day says it is procedure that EMS cannot go inside until law enforcement clears them to enter. The fire chief says law enforcement could not initially confirm if the suspect fled or was deceased, making it too dangerous to let EMS inside. That fire chief telling Fox News in part, decisions cannot be made in a vacuum. It is possible that those that are upset about not being allowed inside simply do not have all of the information that our law enforcement partners had in making their decision. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement is investigating all the actions by the Broward County Sheriff, which will hopefully shed light on the timeline of that day. I know a lot more than you all do now. So all I'm gonna say is yes, I believe there needs to be a full investigation. I don't think some people were honest. And um, we're gonna investigate this in Florida and, and the right thing will be done. Tucker, a rules committee in the Florida Senate today voted down a proposal on a statewide ban on assault weapons here in Florida. Tucker. Matt, thanks a lot. Sheriff Scott Israel would never blame his own repeated failures for the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. Instead, he needed to blame an organization that was not involved, the NRA. During CNN's 1984-esque town hall meeting last week, Israel played the demagogue against NRA spokeswoman Dana Lash. Watch. You just told this group of people that you are standing up for them. You're not standing up for them until you say, I want less weapons. Dana Lash joins us tonight. Dana, when I was, I was watching that, my first thought was, he doesn't sound much like a sheriff. He sounds like someone running for office, a Tammany politician, a red-faced blowhard, a demagogue. It doesn't sound like something a law enforcement official would say in a town hall. What do you make of that? I completely agree with you, Tucker, and I'm so glad that you're talking about this because this is ultimately, this is the failure, and this is where the failure took place. It was with this man and his leadership as Broward County Sheriff. And I'll have everybody know, Tucker, as well, before the sheriff took that stage, uh, him and I sitting up there for this town hall, he was allowed to go out and give a rally-style speech in which he railed against special interests and was naming the NRA and really setting the stage up to go after five million law-abiding innocent Americans 
who didn't get all of the 45, I think is what BuzzFeed reported tips that his office received. Uh, they didn't have the murderer calling his office himself, telling him that he thought he was a threat and that police needed to do something. Family members weren't calling the NRA reporting this. They were calling his office. And so he has a lot of explaining to do. And one more quick thing, Tucker. I asked the sheriff on stage whether or not he could have actually arrested this murderer based on a Florida state statute that, that treated anyone sending electronic or written threats of bodily injury, harm, or death to other individuals as this murderer did with his classmates, whether he could have arrested that individual charged with a felony. And the sheriff did indicate that he could, but then he glossed right by it and wanted to refocus and shift responsibility away from his dereliction of duty. I think he owes a lot of innocent Americans an apology. Well, but it's all it's also really troubling because I mean this is guy's not a congressman from Camden. He has the power to put people in jail to take their lives away from them. He's a law enforcement official. And this behavior seems reckless and dishonest and weird comparing yourself to jail, you know, to MLK and Gandhi. I mean, d does it seem like right. there's something wrong with him? And, you know, you mentioned that, that Game of Thrones quote, the lion doesn't worry about the opinions of the sheep. Well, he mentioned that again yesterday in a radio interview with a, with a South Florida station, and he was attacking all of those, including the congressman that you just had on, the lawmaker that you just had on, uh, the state of Florida, who uh, was calling for his resignation. And, you know, I, I agree with you. I, I don't, I wish that this would have come out on the stage. I wish that this truth would have been known at that particular time. It seemed as that he was more interested in turning this into a campaign campaign stop. And I will say that this really explains why the Coral Springs police chief came out against the Broward County Sheriff the way that they did. They said in right. a statement that the truth is going to come out because Coral Springs police reacted. They were the first ones in and they seem to be really calling the Broward Sheriff out on what I can only assume to be showboating was what they were suggesting in their letter. And there had to be a lot of drama behind the scenes for other law enforcement officers who really, I mean, these are the guys who, uh, I mean, they, they sacrificed they ran in, they heard the sound of gunfire of and screaming Tucker, and they ran in and they did what they could to save innocence. That's why we love our law enforcement because of what they do for us. And now it's no wonder that they came out against this, this Broward County Sheriff. It's also transparent though. I mean, th I'm not blaming the, shooty, the shooting on the sheriff. He didn't commit the shooting, but a series of missteps no, by his agency not. allowed it to happen. He's culpable in some way, and yet he's diverting all the attention to others it's the most basic and recognizable kind of butt covering. Why does the press not point that out? I wish they would. I mean, what we're talking about is systemic failure here. And Tucker, yeah. I mean, here you had the 45 reports into this sheriff's office. You also had two FBI reports. But even bigger than that, we've had decades of the political class ignoring the mental health crisis here in the United States and politicians who have refused to report dangerous people who are been adjudicated unfit, dangerous to themselves or others, to the yeah. NICS system. And so this is why we at the NRA have been pushing for targeted action and offering solutions on this. And we're going to continue to do so. Yeah. So if you run a city with tens of thousands of mentally ill people living on the sidewalk and you're lecturing us about guns, you know, maybe time to wake up uh, a little bit. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker. Well, in the days since the Florida school mass massacre, almost nobody seems to be asking the essential and obvious question, which is why would a 19 year old murder strangers? And if you really wanted to make America better, you'd be desperate for an answer to that question. But go ahead and ask an elected Democrat that question. We've tried that, and they won't engage. You start with the obvious. Does the collapse of the family play some role in this? I don't know. Good question. Silence. Single mothers are one of the Democratic Party's most important constituencies. They can't admit the disappearance of fathers at home has been a disaster. It has been. How about the overprescription of pharmaceuticals to kids or violent media, the sudden omnipresence of soul-destroying technology in our lives? It's everywhere. They won't even respond to that. All those explanations might make Democratic donors uncomfortable. That's the answer. So instead, they attack the NRA because it's politically convenient. The NRA opposes them in elections. Therefore, it's their fault. It's hard to think of a more cynical strategy, and yet it's working. Using their propaganda arm in the American media, the Democratic Party has succeeded in bullying Republican leaders into making pointless concessions on gun control, including the president, by the way. Banning bump stocks is going to solve the problem? Does anyone really think that? Not one person really thinks that. But that's been the compromise. Have you seen Democrats compromise in any way at all? Have you seen a single Democrat concede that the rise in school massacres may be related to something other than guns in the NRA? Nope. Because the point is not to make schools safer. The point is to win power. That ought to be clear. By the way, as to why this is happening in the first place, 
Jordan Peterson joins us later in the show uh, with his views on it. Fascinating. Mayor of Oakland, California, collaborating with illegal immigrants to undermine America's own laws. Not making that up. That story next. Cite the official story about DACA by heart. DACA recipients are dreamers, the best America has to offer. They're all future scientists and humanitarians. If anything, you ought to be deported in their place. We'll meet 21-year-old DACA recipient Abigail Hernandez, who's recently arrested for making terroristic threats, allegedly, against high school students. She posted, apparently, on Facebook two weeks ago that she would go to East High School in Rochester, New York, and, quote, shoot all y'all expletives. Sadly, we imagine this arrest could hurt her otherwise excellent chances of winning a Nobel Prize, but we'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, out in California, in Oakland, the mayor is an open insurrection against the federal government, not exaggerating. On Saturday, Democratic Mayor Libby Schaff issued a press release warning locals that, based on several of her sources, she believed ICE, the Federal Immigration Administration, was about to launch immigration raids in the city of Oakland. The press release advised illegal residents to, quote, prepare, not panic, and to advise them that business owners and schools were not allowed to assist ICE. Cesar Vargas is an illegal immigrant. He works as a lawyer in New York City, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Vargas, thanks for coming on. Tucker, thank you so much for having me. So um, how can a state actively work against federal law? Isn't that kind of how we had a civil war? Well, what's the problem? Do we have a problem that a local city is protecting its, its residents, a local city is pushing against the overbearing power of the federal government. You know, the mayor is not saying, let's protect the rapists, let's protect the child molesters. The, the mayor is simply saying, we're going to protect our residents, regardless of their immigration status. We're going to okay, protect but, our hardworking but you, wait, residents hold on, hold on. to make you're, sure they are to, to the let, city. Let me just be clear. I'm not attacking any of the so-called DACA recipients, people here illegally. Personally, I don't know them. Maybe some are bad people. Maybe they're all great people. They're but the point people. is they're here illegally in violation of federal law. California is a state. You can't, the state of California is not allowed to actively subvert federal law. Then it's not really acting in concert with the other 49 states. That's an active insurrection. How, am I missing something? Well, the Constitution does provide basic rights, but the also Constitution allows the states to create more rights for their residents. Right no. here, we're okay, seeing the city no, of I know, Oakland look, I know providing you say you're more a lawyer, rights but, to its residents and okay. not necessarily saying we're going to detain you, we're going to deport you. If you're working hard, you can stay here. Anyone no, who's committed a crime, okay. ICE can still operate in no, but Oakland so now you're and getting across into the, the country. Look, now you're getting into what we want to be true. I'm just saying what is true. Here's what is true as of now, and until Congress acts, it's true. going to be true. No, the Constitution has been interpreted by the Supreme Court for more than 200 years to say that states cannot act against federal law. That is one of Absolutely. the oldest precepts in American law. And if you say you're a lawyer, I'm sure you know that. So the point I'm making is this. These people are here illegally. Congress can change that. They can legalize them if they want. But right now, their presence is in violation of federal law. The mayor of an American city is saying you may not participate with federal law enforcement. You have to oppose federal law. That is not workable. You can't have that. That is an act of insurrection against the federal government. Do you, do you see this? Do you care? Well, do you know what because, I mean? Just because it's federal law doesn't mean it's, it's right, doesn't mean it's constitutional. The Supreme Court has ruled, and federal courts have ruled, that one, the president does not have the authority to use racial discrimination to target immigrants. One, it's unconstitutional for the president to target sanctuary cities by no, no, defunding you're, their you're, government. No, you're, you're and actually also missing. The federal, no, the federal neither one of them against, but I, against I, I'm sorry, unreasonable I can't search you, and seizures from uh, ICE targeting immigrants. Look, I don't want to check your bar license or something. But protects immigrants okay. as well. Okay. The federal government has a right to enforce federal law. Federal immigration yes. law has not been overturned by the Supreme Court. Please don't make up facts on the show. Those laws are still enforced. And the federal government, by definition, has a law, has a right to enforce them. The states do not have a right to subvert them. There's no argument about that. So what you're seeing is something that cannot stand. I mean, the federal government in previous decades has sent federal troops into states when they do stuff like this. So do you understand the fire that they're playing with, or is it just, it's cool because you think illegals should be able to stay here? No, That I seems just to think, be your core I position. Just, I just think that throughout the judiciary history, we have shown that the states and the cities are the laboratory of democracy. The states have such power to do much more than the federal government has done. And what we're seeing here is the city saying, we're going to push it back against our overbearing government. We have done that. 
The king You're getting used your to bumper stickers in the colonial that's war. Like, and that's why and we had, colonial you have, okay, you, you, I'm you know, sorry. Look at this. I'm sorry. We I'm not allowing against, you to teach American history on my show because you're, 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 you know, you failed the course. the rights of, okay, the, of okay. colonists. Okay. And that's why right, we had a colonial right. war. We had right, a revolution yeah. okay. because we pushed against a tyrant. We pushed against unlawful law that violated the rights of our people. I wish you wouldn't say we. Hold on. Since you're not a citizen, actually, so you don't get to say we. I'm sorry. You just don't. I'm an American. Citizenship does not make me an American. It and does. I think values and I make you, you what that, it means to be an American. I don't know who told you that that's... No, actually, you become an American when you become an American citizen. That's the definition of it. I'm not attacking you as a person. I'm sure no, you're a great course, person. I'm sure you're smart. We're just different in that I'm an American and you're not. And you're that's just a legal citizen. question. We're both Americans, though. Right. No, that's not true. But let me ask you this, though. So Oakland's got all these other problems. And I'm not staying up late at night worried about whether illegal aliens get arrested in Oakland, okay? I'm not, to be honest. What I'm really worried about, though, is the people who run Oakland care more about people there illegally than they care about the thousands of homeless that live on their streets, the hundreds of homeless children. The U.N. went to Oakland and said, this is cruelty, what you're doing to your homeless. And yet they're spending time and money on behalf of people who aren't even allowed to be here. Do you see a kind of weird priority in that? Well, I don't see a, a weirdness that the city of Oakland is protecting all its residents regardless of the immigration status. What we're seeing now, if you want to talk about homeless people, well, I'm talking about the Trump uh, tax reform that's benefiting the wealthy and the 1% and give them more tax break. Those, that tax break should go into helping those homeless people. Should I'm, be going I'm sorry. To I mean, that's so silly. I'm beginning to education. think I don't think you should become a citizen. I mean, no offense or anything. It's not, <laughs> I would be happy to have dinner with you, but Let's that's go just for that's dinner not a nice that's Mexican restaurant. Not a... Very smart point. Caesar, thank you for joining us. I thank appreciate you so it. much, Tucker, for having me. The Democrats' answer to the Nunes memo is out. What is in it? It's confusing, but we're going to explain it for you next. At least their own memo on the FBI, Russia, and the Trump campaign. The memo's release comes two weeks after it was initially blocked by the administration, which said it contained some classified information. What does the memo actually say, in case you haven't read it? Someone who has is Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry, who joins us tonight. Hey, Ed. Tucker, great to see you. Adam Schiff made some bold predictions about how his memo was going to blow the Republican memo out of the water. Hasn't exactly panned out. Remember, Republican Devin Nunes revealed in his memo...